I'm Julie Bartke with Senate Update. Minnesota's primary election is currently in August, but for a variety of reasons, including low voter turnout, the legislature is considering proposals to move that date up. One such proposal, outlined in a news conference on Thursday, would move Minnesota's primary election to March. Here are those details. Well, good morning. I'm Julianne Ortman, Senator from Senate District 47, Chanhassen, and I am joined today with, by uh, Senator John Peterson from the St. Cloud area. We are among uh, four or five uh, state senators that are proposing an alternative to our presidential primary process to join a March primary. We have primaries now in Minnesota. We've had them in September. We've tried them in, uh, in August, and now folks are proposing a June primary, but we're here to say let's talk about a March primary because Minnesota voters, voters would really like to participate in the selection of our presidential candidates. And right now, frankly, we're not even on the map. There are 38 states that make these presidential selections before Minnesota even weighs in. And we have Minnesota voters that are watching the national news in February and March in presidential election years wondering, when does Minnesota get to vote? When do we get to have a say in the selection of our presidential candidates? And so we are here to, today to offer up this alternative of, of a March primary. So we won't have voters in buses heading down to Iowa to weigh in. Instead, we'll have a process right here in Minnesota where people can engage with candidates like Chris Christie or Hillary Clinton. If they want to run for president, we want to welcome their, them here to Minnesota. We want to hear what they have to say, and we want to make sure they know what we have to say. So we've proposed this March primary. We think it's a great idea. We hope legislators will look at it. We also hope, uh, more importantly, that Minnesotans will weigh in. We want to encourage Minnesota voters to re-engage in the process of selecting our candidates, and this bill is, in, is determined to do that. One way we know for sure is primary voter participation has dropped off significantly over the last several decades. And if you look at this great graphic prepared by Jimmy Knutson of our Senate Republican Caucus media staff, it demonstrates very well the decline in the number of voters in our primary elections in the state of Minnesota. More importantly, if you look at the actual numbers of voters turning out for our primary elections, it's really quite shocking. Less than 50 percent of the numbers in 1966 voters turned out for our primaries in, 19, in 2014. We went from over 800,000 voters participating in our primary in 1966 to about 400,000 voters with a much greater statewide population participating in 2014. We want to re-engage those voters. I believe after the work that I've done uh, visiting with voters all across the state, I know that uh, Senator, Senator Peterson probably has a similar experience, that Minnesotans are asking when do we get to participate. Well, we're here to say we think we can manage a process in March to serve the voters and re-engage them. I am going to defer to Senator Peterson to speak, and then we will answer any questions you might have. Uh, good morning. Uh, I really want to thank Senator Ortman for her very intelligent and thoughtful approach uh, to this issue. Uh, she mentioned we both have had a chance to go through this, and as you work as a candidate and decide to put your name on a ballot and sit down with your staff and volunteers and friends uh, and try and put together a strategy to deal with a primary that uh, uh, that falls very late in the year right now. It's my belief, uh, and I believe uh, most Minnesotans will agree, and people that work on these uh, political efforts and these campaigns, that an early primary is going to better serve uh, the candidate that ends up on the ballot. It takes them out of a position to have to compete with each other and then uh, talk about their ideas um, and uh, issues as they move forward and puts them in a situation to uh, to be able to organize that effort and move into the summer season, the campaign season, and into the fall uh, with a much more clear and organized message. I think Minnesotans uh, are looking for that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, um, quite frankly, uh, I've heard over and over, uh, all the every, we all are aware of the attention that Iowa gets in regards to the presidential poll, and quite frankly, we want to bring that home to Minnesota. Uh, we have advocates really on both sides of Minnesota that are, are very, we have a long, long political history in this state and it's time, in my view, to bring a lot of that attention back to Minnesota rather than letting our friends uh, just to the south in Iowa uh, have that as well. So thank you very much for coming here and helping us uh, bring some attention to this issue. Would, would this apply just to the upcoming presidential election or would this 
kind of mark it in time now for all elections going forward to have a March primary uh, in Minnesota? This bill would propose a process for March always being our primary. So for every election, we would have March primaries. And I would just say the, the party process that we have in place now, the precinct caucuses, can be adjusted. With some slight adjustments, we can still continue that process. There's plenty of time for our parties to endorse candidates prior to this March primary with just a little bit of adjustment. So I, I don't think that it's a major change in that regard. It would just serve the voters so much better. And that's our goal here is to engage those voters as early as possible in this race. But not just the presidential race, for all offices? Yes, for all offices. And as, as you guys well know, lawmakers are down here during in session during March. And I mean, would, would this increase the, the likelihood that you guys would face primaries or more our political decisions earlier in the session? I'm so glad you asked that question. Because I have participated in September primaries, as I said. I've participated in an August primary. The voters aren't engaged in August and September, and they're going to be just about equally unengaged or disengaged in June when people are leaving school, they're leaving the legislature, they're going on to their summer vacations and summer plans. They're not going to be as engaged in June. And the other uh, pitfall I see with the June proposal is the legislature is in session all the way from January until the end of May. It's no less disruptive to have this primary in March than it is in June. And I don't think it's a bad thing to have legislators out knocking on doors in January and February and talking to voters and talking to people about legislative issues. Equally so if that primary is in June. Doesn't it make it a bit harder for you though? Know, I mean, let's face it, everyone's, no one wants to be outside when it's five below zero outside today knocking on doors. Does that make it harder for you as candidates to campaign during that time? Well, I, I'll be honest, I was out at 100 degrees, you know, in, in the summer months trying to get yeah, to an August. Wants to answer the doors, <laughs> <'cause it's laughs> so. Less so at 100 degrees. I, I, am, I am just saying that we need to serve the voters first. That's our primary responsibility, and engage those voters. Sure, there are some process questions here that we're going to work through, but I think let's go back to engaging the kinds of voter turnout that we've had in previous elections. That's what we heard from out on the campaign trail through the last year. People want to be engaged. And you know, if you watch the national news in February and March, it's all over the news, the selection of the presidential process. And people say, well, what about Minnesota? Which way is Minnesota go? Well, it doesn't matter because it's already decided by then. And with our precinct caucus process with delegates that aren't really um, bound by that first vote, you see what happened in the last presidential uh, straw poll. The state went for Rick Santorum, but he didn't get even one vote at the national convention. And so this also would address that and say that these delegates, once they're selected, at least on that first ballot, should support the votes of their of their straw polls or pollers in their in their districts. So I think it's to re-engage the voters with these delegates. It's to re-engage voters in this process. And the rest of us will adjust. That's our job. We're supposed to serve the voters first. Your goal would be to get this in place for next year's presidential and legislative election? Yes. And, and do you think it just extends the campaign season? I mean, does, I mean, does everything else, all the other mechanics, machinery has to move further maybe into January or even December to the people who are running for state office, do they have to get moving earlier in the year before? To Actually, no. I think the time, the, the length of the time of the campaign is the same, but it's longer in the general election portion of the campaign and less in that preparatory uh, process and the engaging of the, the political parties. I think that part would be shortened. The general election discussion would be longer. Do you have some more thoughts on sure. those questions? Yeah. In, in addition to that, right now, we, we as local candidates, we face uh, primary challenges even in our basic political organizational units as we have local conventions. Um, if somebody decides they don't uh, like how their elected official is performing, we, we face those challenges now during session. And in my view, it's really no different than uh, dealing with that uh, challenge on a broader base. Uh, you know, through a, a broader primary system, we're dealing with that challenge uh, locally at a at a local convention in your in your local community. Any DFL co-sponsors of this so far? You know, I haven't had. I, you know, I just went to folks that I knew had gone through this process, and we are working on engaging other legislators right now, um, and House authorship, and working to develop that. But um, as I said before, there have been some 
there's been quite a lot of talk about the June primary, and that's why I wanted to lay out this alternative as quickly as I could so um, folks at home could weigh in on this process as well and see what the options really are. All right, well, if you have anything else that you need, Hannah in my office can help, and Jimmy here is here, and Bill Walsh is here, so let us know if there's more that you'd like to know about this proposal. Just one quick follow-up question. Where does this, uh, forgive me, I don't have the Iowa caucuses off the top of my head, but they, where would this fall in line with that? Well, we have that information. Let's see here. Right now, uh, I don't think Iowa's on here because Iowa is a straw poll, probably. So uh, the first six are New Hampshire, South Carolina, Florida, Missouri, Arizona, and Michigan. Right now, Minnesota weighs in as 39th. We would be in March, and that would make us the 18th state to weigh in. If you want some of that information, we have all of it for you. And Hannah and Jimmy and Katie and Bill are here to provide it for you. All right, thank you all very much.